Wow, that was pretty insane. <laughs> we'll see how that particular video ended at the end of this one. Uh, but for now, I thought you guys wouldn't mind joining me on a beautiful hike up a very popular mountain in the area. I'm sure you guys have figured it out by now, hopefully, maybe, maybe now. Uh, yeah, that's right, I am on Elsie's Peak. And uh, I thought we could uh, do our devotion on the trail and uh, spend a little bit of time discussing some closing thoughts on the Israelites in the wilderness. And today we're going to be discussing the topic of growth and how growth is such a, an important and fundamental thing to us as Christians and, uh, and how the Israelites had to deal with it in maybe a little unpleasant way where it was forced and where their circumstances were really difficult. And uh, I guess it kind of required all of them to grow up a little bit and ultimately put their trust in God. So today's reading is going to come from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8. But just before we go to that, I just want to give you a, a shot of the view because it is really stunning. So here you go. One moment. Wait, there it is. Oh, gorgeous. All right, so let's take a listen to that reading. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Be careful to follow every command I am giving you today, so that you may live and increase, and may enter and possess the land the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these forty years, to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not swell during these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in obedience to him and revering him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, streams, and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey, a land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. So I thought I'd take a leaf out of Justine's book. You know, she looked extremely relaxed on the beach the other day during the devotion, so I'm going to give it a go. Although I don't have years of Pilates to make these types of positions comfortable. So Justine, if you have any tips, I'd appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> so the Israelites. Okay, so we're talking about growth and um, the importance of growth uh, to us as Christians. And specifically in this passage, we can see how the Israelites were put into the situation where they were forced to grow. And um, we've spoken quite a bit about what they went through and about how it was part of God's plan and how you know, they were, they were in this difficult situation and it kind of forced them to, to trust God. But we haven't talked so much about personal growth and how the Israelites grew, uh, both in terms of a community with their relationship with God and um, also individuals uh, individually with their relationship with God. And uh, I think that's such an important thing that we can often miss is that when we go through difficult times, um, that that is an opportunity for us to grow as individuals and um, I think the only point if you remember one thing from this little message is is that real meaningful growth almost always happens through difficulties and of course you get to choose whether you'd like to do that or not you'd like to participate in the growth or not but it is a choice and uh, it is something that is required of us and I think in the world we're living in today it's uh, a crucial decision that every morning when when we wake up that we uh, we make that, that choice um, that we are going to take the difficulties that that come on, on any given day and we are going to allow God to, to use those difficulties to refine us and to make us into to better people. So my story is, uh, is that when I was younger, um, I was terrified of a lot of things, especially in primary school. I was really scared of, man, just about everything. Um, I went through a phase where I was just like, I don't know, I would spend a lot of time anxious and worried about bad things that would happen to me and as I got older especially when I became uh, a teenager I started realizing that the only way for me to deal with those fears and those worries was to face them head-on one of my biggest fears was 
I was afraid of heights. And um, I, uh, I really didn't like going near the edges of anything. In fact, right now I'm near a bit of a precarious edge, but I'm not too phased about it. And, and that's because I kind of dealt with it. And uh, when I was 17, uh, our church that I was with at the Baptist church went on a, um, an epic trip down Suicide Gorge. And um, that conquered all of my fears of heights. And I was so scared beforehand. I was really terrified. But the only way through that difficulty, and the only way at least to grow, was to face it head on. Kind of like what they call exposure therapy. When you're afraid of something, uh, one of the best kind of psychological tactics is to is to like immerse yourself in that world. So if you're afraid of spiders, to spend more and more time with spiders until you're desensitized to it. Same with public speaking. And God's wired us, up, uh, God's wired us this way so that we can... Um, really have a shot at being able to grow in the midst of dif difficulties and i really want to encourage you guys this week is uh to to look at the challenges that you're facing maybe with your friends your family maybe you know the the difficulties that have arisen because of of the coronavirus and ask yourself the question how can i grow as an individual what is god trying to teach me and how can i ultimately grow and become uh, a better person through it and uh, yeah, that's pretty much the message today. I hope you have an epic day and I hope that your Sunday is filled with good things. And oh, another thing, subscribe to the Methodist Church. Subscribe, subscribe, smash the subscribe button. I think when I checked, there was like 120, 130 subscribers. Let's try add 10 more on top of that. Let's get to like 140. That would be epic. Have a great day. Be blessed. Mm!